fact, uh, Mauritius is an island formed out of a volcano, meaning there was nobody living on the island. My great-grandfather came from India, so I'm the fourth generation. And then my grandfather was born here, and of course my father and me. The story of sugar is the story of Mauritius. Our forefathers came here to plant sugar cane. This is in our blood. It is essential for the life of the people who are living on this island. I love going to the field. I love putting my hands into it. I think it's in the, in the, in the blood. I, I'm going there every day. I take my pickup, I work there, and I do my stuff. And it's a great satisfaction to see that the cane, the sugar cane, is just looking at it. It's fantastic. You know, since the early days, from school, we know that sugar used to be the backbone of the economy. But still, when I grew up, so in the 1970s, when I went to primary school, always sugar was still the, the key industry in the island. If you go beyond the economics, you look at the environment, the, you look at the, the scenery in Mauritius. So basically anyone landing in Mauritius during the time, you will see that one third of the island is covered by sugarcane fields, eh, which is very conspicuous as you are landing into Mauritius and as you are driving around. In fact, at one point in time, the first economy of Mauritius was sugar. You know, if there was no sugar, maybe Mauritius would be Nothing, you know. And then there was a, a, our, four, our first pr uh, prime minister, you know, he negotiated and they got a, like a guaranteed ACP price. And then recently, I mean a few years back, the EU was looking into reducing all these costs. So just imagine your cost was reduced by 36%. So you're used to getting 100 and now you're getting 36% less. So many people were discouraged because cost of living was going. I think we, we continue to be dependent on sugar. We cultivate sugarcane, we produce sugar, and the country will continue on the same track, whether there will be other industry, tourism, or textile. But for me, sugarcane will be the main product of Mauritius. Uh, my family and the whole community of Chemin Grenier, they, they know how to work in the fields. They are skilled workers. They can work in the field. From sugar, they get their living. If there is no sugar cane, that would be a good disaster for their country. heard and read about what fair trade was all about and how the objective was to empower the small planters in different parts of the world. I thought well, this was a golden opportunity, especially when the price of sugar was going down, there was a lot of competition on the international market. Since uh, 2008 we have witnessed the decrease in the price of sugar. That's where we, after that, we embark in the fair trade. With this partnership, we are managing uh, the challenges quite well in the sense that uh, we have uh, f the differentiation between the product that we are selling and that uh, other countries, for example, the EU with the cap reform in 2017 will be itself a producer of sugar, but it can never be a fair trade certified producer. When you explain the word fair, everyone likes to be treated fairly. Whereas when you look in, in life, it's unfair. You know, it's unfair and people, they just want to get the maximum from something and just let the other one die. And this is what fair trade comes and brings a difference. 
And then it's also, you know, the way you treat people, the way you talk to people, you know, all these makes a difference and then people get motivated. And then participation, to get them to participate, to give their ideas. Before it was run on traditional criteria, traditional lines, especially when I came back from, from the West and I thought, well, there were a lot of things that needed adjusted. When fair trade came with all the criteria that we had to follow, we had to implement and everything, um, this was a good chance to, to improve the service, to improve the, the services we, we were giving to the members and at the same time improve the quality of the product that we were giving to the international community. The fair trade label in the market is a way to, to be different as well. And uh, increasingly in the developed market, we are talking more and more about sustainability, that consumers in Europe, for instance, they want to be sure that whatever is being produced in the developing countries being done in a sustainable, sustainable manner. We are very much more conscious about the world uh, environment, climate, ch climate change. And when we know that consumers in the uh, UK, they want to know the product or the, the source of the product, through fair trade, we can say that this is a genuine product that is being sold to them. Our sugar is being sold all over the world. So this was a challenge, you know, and uh, we worked very hard at it right from the beginning. Uh, how we, we went about organizing ourselves and uh, implementing and, and um, conforming to the, to the criteria laid down by Fairtrade International. Before we were Fairtrade certified, we did have our business as usual. But when Fairtrade has come, certain aspect of our work, which we were doing, we find it was not like that. It should be the way fair trade is telling us. There should be an environmental issues. We have to be environmental issues. We have uh, the development issues. We have learned great from fair trade. And it was, it was a great day when we were certified and we started getting the premiums. So we all sat down in very democratic, transparent way to discuss the projects that we were going to move into. Since I've become uh, certified, Fair Trade certified, our main object was to try to help those farmers with the Fair Trade premium that we get. At that time, we were, we were having great difficulties concerning transportation of sugarcane from the field to the sugar factory. Because at, at that time it was a very, very acute problem. We, uh, people had the, the sugarcane left in the field for two or three weeks. We decided with a fair trade premium to purchase a tractor that is going to cater for the uh, transportation of sugarcane from field to, to the factory. We bought one tractor in 2011. We used those tractors to carry the cane, the sugar cane of our uh, farmers to the factory at a reduced price. An example is that if uh, normally a transportation cost from a company which costs uh, 600 rupees, we as a society, we are charging 400 rupees. If, we, if a normal price is 600, we, we will pay 300 for the transportation cost and we intend in the near future to give free transportation fees for the members. The members will not have to pay anything. The, the tractor will carry their sugarcane to the factory. We give the members an extra of uh, uh, 15 rupees per ton can as a subsidy on transport. Together with the subsidies that they are getting from the tractor, we gave them again a subsidy of 15 rupees from the premium of factory. With the premium, we give them a subsidy to purchase fertilizer. We were giving, for one hectare, we are giving 1,000 rupees for subsidy. And next year, we are increasing that subsidy from 1,000 rupees per acre to 1,500 rupees per acre. The society is very much uh, conscious about environmental issues. When they use these uh, pesticides, they don't left that uh, empty bottles in their in the fields. We use a list that uh, fair trade give us for the for the herbicide, but we don't want them to after after punching, after rin, rinsing three time, they leave that in their field. We told them to return that empty bottles to the society. 
where for every bottle we give them a, a, a fee of 25 rupees to encourage them to bring that uh, empty bottles to the society and we as a society we take it and dispose it to the scavenging unit. We don't have any restriction on our membership. If somebody is, is applying to be a membership, we are not going because of his religion, political issues, sex, we are not going to say that we don't want you. We encourage them to, to be our member. We know that sugar is undergoing a crisis. The price is volatile. We don't know what is uh, what will be there in the future. Therefore, we'll have to diversify in activity in other activities. Many con many sugar cane fields are being taken over by the people to build the houses. That would normally reduce the, the volume of sugar produced. Of course, the premium that is being given to us, we have to use this judiciously in order to support our farmers as well to venture in other activities which a vertical change where we can be able to respond to the challenges that will be with time. In Mauritius we are used to producing sugar, so we keep on producing sugar. Of course we have diversified quite a lot. So long as uh, we are in fair trade, we are we are getting that premium. That is a great, uh, a, a great support for for the small producers. The land is being used, but the sugar is still the backbone, as far as the agriculture is concerned. We can't rely entirely on sugar. We'll be producing vegetable. We have to engage in tourism, in fair trade tourism, so that our farmers and their families will be able to sustain in the future.